Hello and welcome to the After the Sermon podcast. This is a Bethany Church podcast. Every week we get together and we do a deep dive into the sermon. And this is actually a special podcast. There's actually four of us. So if you're watching the video, you can see I'm joined. My name is Joe and I'm joined by Thad and David and Tammy. So we got the, the dream team here right in front of you. So you guys are lucky you're in for a treat today. And this is the one year anniversary of the After the Sermon podcast. This one year, it's pretty crazy. Do you yeah. remember when we started it, David? I, I do. Uh, we were in a dark room with, uh, <laughs> with trying to figure out how to do microphones and yeah. do recordings to make something like this work. We didn't know what we were doing at the time, and we didn't have video then either. And yeah. and uh, to give to give props, uh, Joe actually was the one that came up with the idea. Yeah, I, a, I forced it. Uh, do a part. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> do a podcast, and it's been a great thing, which I'm excited to. Mm -hmm. See how it. I'm excited how it's unfolded, but even more how it's going to keep unfolding. Uh, yeah. As we keep going. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, we are going through Colossians, the book of Colossians, and so far it's been, I mean, amazing. Mm -hmm. Tammy, do you agree with that? I do. It's okay. been a, good, a great study. Good. Good. Because Thad doesn't get an opinion. Okay. So, <laughs> no, no. So Thad, why don't you walk us here. through some I'm stuff? I'm just here. Yeah. No, say and, and, you know, it's not. not <laughs> no, it's not. So, uh, so. The book of Colossians is just amazing, and, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've been amazed at just how focused Paul is on the gospel. Every sermon that we've had, uh, he just keeps drawing us back to the cross, to Christ's salvation, and, and really to Christ's sufficiency. And th this sermon is no different as we really look at this. And Dave had a sermon, David had a sermon two weeks ago, I think, that was really also talking about this. Um, but with this one, it's in him, Christ over philosophy right uh, over over uh, anything else we could think and so um, it really comes down to, to who is Jesus and understanding um, who Jesus uh, was is always will be and how important that is um, to us as, as Christians and how important to us as human beings um, I opened up talking about Athanasius of Alexandria mm -hmm. Alexandria uh, incredible uh, church father um, and Athanasius truly understood that the presence of God amid humankind, the incarnation of Jesus is the heart of Christianity and the central fact of all human history. And I kind of walked us through his life, and it was such a testimony of standing firm on who Christ is, because as we all know, Christ comes under attack either directly or indirectly in society all the time. Mm -hmm. And so this was just a great testimony of, of, of even though he did not, he died before the final council there in 381 or 82, however you look at it, Council of Constantinople, where they finally put Arianism to bed, so to speak. But he stood. He stood even through banishment, even through emperors coming after him with imperial uh, guards, all of these kind of things. Uh, he stood strong uh, the entire time and said, no, Jesus is divine. He is the same essence of the Father, and, uh, and, and in him is all that we need. This was his core central uh, tenet, and so I am so thankful for him and his testimony. It sounds like kind of like he's the father of <laughs> Christianity, almost. Like, would you agree with that or not? Well, so I would say this. So you had the Council of Jerusalem, right, that we have recorded in the book of Acts. Then you have the Council of Nicaea in 325. And then you have the Council of Constantinople in 381 and 382. Um, you are early in the formative stages of the church trying to put together a theology based off of the Bible, okay? So he is a extremely uh, important early church father and and i so i don't know that i would i would say um what was it your the your father of yeah I, I wouldn't say i wouldn't say necessarily that but i would say that he was one of the most important early church fathers in the faith who stood by that doctrine it it would have been so easy to uh to, to let this doctrine wane, to let it go, because the power behind Arianism was great. I, I mean, Arius was a powerful leader. He was intelligent. I mean, my goodness, there were emperors that also followed him. And, and so I, in church history, we would be amazed. We were this close several times to going into heresy. Mm. Uh, I just... That's interesting. It's, it's, it's fascinating. And, and so here we were. We were maybe one or two councils away for this thing going another direction. Mm -hmm. And so very, very powerful. And again, there was times in the empire, in the Roman Empire, that this would have been considered the dominant teaching. It, 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 there, there was not a church council that said Arianism is correct. But as a whole, the emperor, there were emperors who were Arians, 
and would say this is the correct teaching and it was Athanasius and his kind that were the minority so I, boy I tell you church history that's is, fun it's gonna to, be fascinating it's right? fun to look at yeah yeah and and but they stood strong mm-hmm. and, and this is eventually God superintended this and so um, again that whole idea starting off that Christ is what we need because Christ is the master key to everything mm-hmm. he's the key that unlocks the relationship to the father to eternal life to the spirit to comfort to wisdom and knowledge to eternal reward and indeed to all the promises of God and in second Corinthians 120 for all the promises of God find their yes in him in Jesus he truly is that center point he truly is Lord and Savior and we've been talking about that throughout um, so powerful truth there uh, in the message we got into the background which uh, man I, I'm not sure how we're going to conclude the, the book of Colossians quite yet because um, it's amazing the real life and I love this with the Bible where you're talking about you've got uh, Epaphras you've got uh, Onesimus uh, Philemon all of these different people all in the town of Colossae and so we also kind of walk back through this because you know Paul didn't start this church Yeah, right. um, mm-hmm. fascinating so at least this investigation, okay, so if you look at um, Acts chapter um, 19 and Ephesus, probably what happened is Epaphras uh, was a student under Paul in Ephesus, and he went into Colossae and founded the church. Um, Verse 1-7 literally talks about this learning that occurred uh, from Epaphras. Um, However, there's other theories out there that it could have been uh, another way. If you look at the Acts dispersion in Acts chapter 8, 1, 11, 19, um, uh, even Acts 2, 8 through 11, the different people who were there for Pentecost, uh, it could be also that there was a migration of belief and the church started even before that. So mm-hmm. we just simply don't know, but we do know that Paul had a heart for the church. He had personal connections, mm-hmm. and this letter was very, very personal. And the uh, relationship to the letter of Philemon with all of these people being there, yeah. perhaps this church, th- this was a house church in Philemon's home. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so many interwoven things here, and we haven't got there yet, but in the book of Colossians, right. we're talking about uh, house rules, and he starts talking about masters and slaves. Mm-hmm. There's one concept to where the letter of Colossians and the book of Philemon could have been carried together to be brought back to the house. Now, I don't think that probably happened, but it's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, it's just amazing to see real life happen uh, and, and real um, real heart-to-heart teaching uh, happening here as it, as it goes. So uh, fascinating stuff. Uh, this letter was circular, uh, not only to Colossians, but also to the uh, Laodicean uh, church. And so uh, probably the similar heresies going on here, the false teachings were happening at both places, and Paul was trying to address them both. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we had the letter that was given to the church of Laodicea, or if we knew the questions that they were asking? Mm-hmm. So, uh, but we can make up certain things. We know that the heresies uh, were were um, people trying to delude them with plausible arguments. This stuff sounded good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It might be right. Take Arianism again, okay? Well, the Bible does say he was the firstborn among creation. There's some plausibility to it now. Uh, the overall weight of Scripture would lean against this, and we understand from um, the Koine Greek and what this could mean, so we disagree with that. But there's the, there's plausibility to some of these arguments. Um, there's also a, a strong concept of philosophy here, according to human uh, tradition, talks about elementary spirits of the world, all of these things. But the key there is at the end of verse 8, but these things were not according to Christ, not according to a Christian worldview, and they were trying to be captured by these philosophies. Um, interesting note here, as we talk about philosophies, world systems, views, um, it's interesting that with the internet, and I think we talked about this on preaching team, we have our own Athens. We have our own Colossae with the internet. Think about it. You can go to your computer and you can have all types of philosophies, all types of worldviews, all types of plausible arguments. Yep. You have your own Athens, your own Colossae uh, right there in front of you. Uh, you know, almost 24 hours a day, mm-hmm. right? It's so important to know what we believe and where we stand with Jesus Christ, or we could fall captive to some of these empty, deceitful philosophies. So you, you talk about this a little bit in the message, and I think uh, as you even bring up this tension, I know there's fear that mm-hmm. comes around with a lot of people that are saying, so because of that, just stay away from all of them. Don't talk about them. Don't don't read anything. Don't, mm-hmm. don't study. Don't look at those things. Just... Just keep your nose in, in, in the Bible because then you won't have to worry about these other things. And, and yet there's this tension of, uh, we talked about this in the preaching team, of 
And yet, in order to challenge false teachings, I have to at least understand them. But they, I actually think they're more likely to sneak in mm -hmm. when I don't understand what else is out there that is maybe false versus uh, being completely ignorant of what's out there and, and only knowing what I grew up with as the only interpretation yeah. of, of, a, of an idea. So I think that's a great, a, a great thing to point out because um, – Here's the way that I would talk about that, and let's even take it with, say, uh, private Christian schools. Okay, oh, yeah, my yeah, heart I, towards. And I went to one. I, yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely. From that. My kids go to one, right? Wife teaches there. Same your, your dad there, I, right? Yeah, yeah. I graduated. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay. So, um, here's the thing. Here, here's what I would say. Let's say that I was on the board at Cooley, or I was in some prominent position, mm -hmm. and someone asked me, "What would I want students at Cooley learning?" I said, "Okay, well, first I want them learning correct orthodoxy. I want I want them taught in the Bible. All this, of course." However, in saying that, I do want them exposed to other philosophies, to other concepts, because mm -hmm. I don't want them being ignorant of them, but I want them to know the truth, uh, ironclad, and engage with these other theories so that they're not caught off guard. Because how many kids go to college, how many right. guys get exposed yeah, exactly. to the internet, the, work, the world, and all of a sudden they've never heard anything else, and they've not learned how to think. They've not learned how to articulate truth and respond to how error. How do they wrestle with plausible arguments? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they're different than what absolutely. they hearing. And so while I would say um, first create a foundation of truth, but, but I would say it is advantageous to expose ourselves to other thoughts, um, hopefully within a context of encouragement of what truth is, so that we know how to respond apologetically uh, to others and how to not just lose our minds the first time someone disagrees with us. Mm -hmm. um, it is sad um, that I have seen places to where uh, there are Christian schools out there that just so shun um, other learnings that kids are almost completely ignorant of what yeah. someone else believes yeah. and uh, they, are, they are stunned, they're defensive um, they give a poor testimony to Christ um, to me personally I find it enthralling and wonderful when a Christian is uh, given some type of worldview or philosophy that's incorrect and then with heart and intelligence answers articulately articulate, articulate it was they say it well. Yeah. <laughs> they say it well. well. Say yeah, it. yeah, <laughs> right. Um, but then they give a logical, coherent argument back that this is why I believe what I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I, that is that is one of the most wonderful things, and it opens the door to people who would be close to Christianity because they find, you know what, this may be by faith, um, but but this is a reasonable faith. It is grounded in history. It is grounded in eyewitness testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is, there is, um, there is evidence to believe what we believe, even though it is ultimately by faith. But, but you have to be exposed to this. You can't be ignorant of this. Um, and, and so I would, I would agree with you there. How does that relate to the counterfeit, um, expert yeah, studying so, the real thing? Um, I was reading one time that, um, back in the day when we were really struggling with counterfeit money, dollar bills, things like that, um, of course, they would look at fake, right? That's part of their job to mm -hmm. discover what's counterfeit, what's not. But how they would tra train them is they would study first what is an actual dollar bill. Mm -hmm. See see the original. See what it's supposed to be. Learn that. Know that. The weight, the texture, the feel. Um, if there's something translucent, you know, be able to see through that, all, all of those things. And, and then go and find the counterfeit. Don't look at everything all kind of on a similar page to where um, in your mind there could be confusion. Yeah. Focus first on the truth and then go and look at, the, at, the, at what's false or what is counterfeit. Um, and so for us in our Christian church, we have to be um, sure of what we do believe uh, in, in our orthodox views. And then we can begin to encounter and look at what is false. Um, so, for example, what if somebody presented me with the truth of Arianism um, and, and what we, we believe is Christian orthodoxy, and they said, um, here you go, either way, in, in, in a young stage. And mm -hmm. I don't know, right? So I would rather us learn what is correct, mm -hmm. know why we believe that, be cemented in that, and then be exposed to other things. I think the why is so important, because we, mm -hmm. we often speak of philosophy as, as the enemy. But the why, there's a philosophy of why we believe what we do, even as we come to Scripture. Mm -hmm. There's a heart behind it, a, a thread, uh, and so to, the why is so important. I, I think mm -hmm. that's where that you run to the most tension. I think even growing up in Christian school um, and in Christian home, there was a lot of telling me what I was to believe, but I didn't get a lot of the why. And the why is what makes things actually more. Without the why, <laughs> it is more shaky. 
We yeah. need to know why it's important that Jesus is God, not just that Jesus is God. Yeah, I mean, growing up, it was always like, evolution is bad. It's not real. Forget it. Don't even listen to it, you know? Whereas opposed to what you're saying, it sounds like, hey, study evolution and why it's false so that you can give a clear argument as to why God created the heavens and the earth. Right, so I, I literally wrote a paper. Um, I think I also put it in a, a journal article, but it was an argument of, uh, oh, well, I can't remember what's titled, but it was something to the effect of um, the absolute necessity of a literal Adam and Eve for Pauline soteriology. And basically what it's saying is Adam and Eve, according to Paul's theology, have to be literal created figures or else his salvation, doctrine of salvation, is would be flawed mm -hmm. or inaccurate. Um, but there's a lot of study that goes into that, right? Because people would say there's mythological Adam and Eve. They were groupings of people. They weren't literal individual peoples. Yeah. Evolution occurred before that. Now, I mean, we have to... You know, there, there needs to be an understanding. We need to talk about not only uh, Darwinism, but Timothy Hutton and, and, and the geological um, um, sameness of time, right? You know, you need to understand where all this came from so when someone comes to you with it, you can say, yeah, right, a lot of these arguments began in the 19th century, and this is what happened with Timothy Hutton, who impacted Darwin, who wrote this, and then and here we go with long periods of time, and, and that allows then for uh, evolution to take place. And so anyways, all, all of this, I don't, you, know, yeah. you don't want to get too far down that stream, <laughs> but you need to have some background in it to be able to converse with it, right? And so um, it's, 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 uh, it's very important. I, on Apple News, um, by the way, I'm not advocating for that news. I'm just saying that I was reading that news. And um, uh -oh. <laughs> some of the recent investigations into uh, uh, panspermia, right, the idea that life comes from other planets, you know, something hits Mars, it pops off Mars and lands on Earth, and that's where life came from. I found it was fascinating. It was very interesting. Uh, I, I, I disagree with it. Um, but to me, in one essence, this is part of a search to say there's got to be something other than God. There's got to be something other than the Christian right. idea of origins. Mm -hmm. We are going to grasp at straws, no matter how improbable they are, to make this happen. Because yep. you know, the chances of this actually occurring, while there is a chance, are so small. Are so small. You know? But anything to escape the idea of God in a Christian worldview. I think as, you, as, as we even talk about this and we talk about understanding different viewpoints or different philosophies or whatever it is, the centrality of this text is where you cannot compromise is in Christ. It's mm -hmm. in yeah. him. It's yep. about Christ. There, there are elements, and that's what I love about the free church. They, they, they work hard to try to say we cannot compromise on these core yep. uh, theological distinctions, these, these core beliefs, but then, but then have humility as we're understanding but well, now that we're centrality of Christ, how does that reflect how we understand the topic of creation? How we understand the the topic of baptism? How do we understand the topic of you know name off these various topics? And I think that's where that's where the it, that's where I think this text also is centrality is Christ. Centrality is Christ. Know these core things that guide us in how to walk through these other areas with humility and grace with even fellow believers. You have to stand up against certain teachings. You mm -hmm. have to heresy is vital to stand up to. Humility as we walk through those core beliefs and how they apply to these other ones is a, is a grace we have to have with each other. Well, I think um, in the quote I shared with the foundational presuppositional truths, there's certain things that we need to come to the table that, mm -hmm. like, like the doctrine of Christ, mm -hmm. they say, okay, these are uh, absolute truths that I'm coming to the table. And understand the other side, those who disagree with us, also have uh, presuppositional foundational truths yes. that they're coming to the table with. But we have to be firm on those truths yes. first yes. and then going in there because I love philosophy it's great yeah. I, I love to I love to think <clears throat> but I think from a distinctive understanding of truth in Jesus Christ there's a foundation in that worldview that that begins there and then philosophy can uh, shed light on many things um, but philosophy can't take you away from Christ I'm trying to think of when I was reading this uh, so many philosophers they come to the end of their life uh, and they are um, De uh, often depressed mm -hmm. because oh, who was the one that um, oh philosophy has uh, basically saying it's been a washout for me it's not given me the ultimate answers in life I can philosophize back and back and back but still I find no meaning and ultimate truth mm -hmm. um, any any philosophy devoid 
of of for God, mm -hmm. if if it were, is ultimately going to lead you into that place of nothingness uh, or, or lack of ultimate purpose. And I think I just got hung up on verse seven, and so. I, part of me is like, I get it, and I understand philosophy, and it's important, and we do want to, we do want to be able to talk intelligently with others that come against our Christian worldview. Um, but verse seven, when it just says, "Christ Jesus as Lord, continued to walk in Him, being rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, and overflowing with gratitude," that just seems so important, and it totally highlights what you're saying. Those who run after these empty philosophies find themselves empty and depressed and broken at the end of their lives. As we are in Christ, as we are spending time with Him, joy and and gratitude. That that is the end result um i don't know i just couldn't hardly get past seven when i was prepping, almost like when i was prepping for this the christian philosophy is only jesus and then the world's philosophy is anything but jesus mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. you have to get away from it and, and i th and so um great job with that little jump ahead mm. because it, well, i didn't mean to do that <laughs> no it's, it's perfect timing okay. but it was so that that verse there <coughs> or say so take six and seven together mm -hmm. therefore as you receive christ jesus the lord that's also important it says mm -hmm. so walk in him mm -hmm. right that con constitutes a daily relational walk in him remember an um action right mm -hmm. right um so our early church follower we're talking about athanasius um i talked about how his strength was in his um devotedness to christ and that relationship um, so walk in him, that daily walking relationship. There's something more than even just a head knowledge that mm -hmm. tells us this is truth. And then it says, rooted, deep roots, and built up in him and established. That is so fascinating there because not only should we have a daily walk with him, but we, we needed to have started and to have been rooted and to mm -hmm. gone deep with him and established in the faith. Mm -hmm. And again, this goes back to the conversation. If I was a Christian church, somebody important, you know, whoever, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, okay, I want to see the kids established and rooted in truth, walking with Christ. <coughs> but then I'd want to see them come along. They're established now, but I'd want to see them come along and eventually understand uh, mm -hmm. these other concepts and different things. But that being established, that being rooted, that walking in daily mm -hmm. is stuff that never stops for us. It's an ongoing relationship. It's an ongoing learning. We will never exhaust the infinite God Mm -hmm. in, in our in our learning and our mm -hmm. growth and so it's something continual that we must have and, and we must stay in that because again this is the danger they were being taken captive by these philosophies human traditions deceitful things um, that were not according to Christ but according to human tradition mm -hmm. um, so 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 fascinating and and even on a but and, and I think I think uh, we didn't talk about it quite yet but like um, so those first 15 or so verses that, that I covered in this sermon talks about the thought process here. And David, a couple of weeks ago, talks about the outworking of this process. Or maybe it was even something totally separate. It could be two sides of one coin. You think this way, you act this way. Or it could have been two different yeah. heresies where this is someone who's trying to tell you how to think and higher knowledge. This is another group over here trying to tell you how, how to live and, and, and to, to work and respond. Um, you, yeah, and, and it, it, it's weird because we were going back and forth about what folks said. Mm -hmm. Well, one was human tradition, and mm -hmm. this is what you're dealing with human ideas, like anything but Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. The other one was religious traditions. Even mm -hmm. we began with things that God had established. So you're right, there's mm -hmm. these two different tensions that we get caught up in. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't know, was this something, because some people think there could be some Essene understanding here, uh, th There's because there is a Jewish, uh, there was a Jewish population there, and in that second half, you feel that, 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 that little bit that, more yeah. legalism or yep. more of your Jewish side. But in that first first 15 verses, boy, you really feel more of a Greek philosophy, yeah, right, yeah. uh, you know, thing happening there. Mm -hmm. And so it could be a blending merging of one teaching, or it could be two separate teachings mm -hmm. that Paul is saying, look, both of you are wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's and, all found and, in and Jesus. Them together, yeah, yeah. Also right, happen, right, right, right. So, so both of you are wrong. Christ is sufficient. He is what you need. Drop this other stuff and start there, right? You know. And so it's 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 a. So you had referenced it. It helps when we're doing this if we know what question is being asked. And sometimes oh, that would we don't be, know yeah. the exact question that is being answered, <coughs> or that had been asked. Bible scholars have talked about this for years. We are. 
Uh, so we see the answer. We see the truth in Scripture, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it could be so helpful in knowing what questions were asked, right? right? What was he speaking to? Because mm -hmm. we don't know exactly, right? Now, part of this, for some of us, it's very fun to think about, could well, be this. what was could this? Be that. What was could that, right? That's, that's mm -hmm. a, a fun deductive game. But um, we... Uh, we ultimately don't know. We see the answers. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be fascinating. But, you know, and sometimes I think God did this divinely because it also makes it easier for us to apply it to our own society. Because you've right. got, you've, you've got, mm, you've, good word. You, you've mm -hmm. got that's people, good you've got people out there that are trying to live and do and earn, in a sense, their salvation mm -hmm. or their goodness. Take Islam, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's essentially a way, skills, religion. Mm -hmm. Um, there could be any other number of, of religions out there that's like, let me be good enough to earn heaven or whatever. Um, then there's others out there uh, taken off from a Gnosticism or any other kind of different viewpoint where it's, it's you know, um, you just need to believe the right things, but it's not really about what you do. Or perhaps you can do anything and you are divine within yourself and all of this kind of stuff. You know, so there's there's so many different thoughts out there. Again, our own Athens is sitting right in front of you guys, not me, because I'm spiritual. But sitting in front oh, of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, wow. uh, but, uh, but it's a. Uh, but it's I don't just see a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> the scriptures in the document. The scriptures in the document. But uh, it's. That's on tape. Was accused of that once. But it. But. But again, it, again, it comes down to, to the centrality of Christ. Uh, 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 like again. We can have philosophy, we can do all the things, but it needs to be a philosophy according to Christ, not according, uh, mm -hmm. or at least not directly according to, to human tradition, because we can learn things from different people. Mm -hmm. we, we can grow in other areas that can be right and true, mm -hmm. um, but it has to start with that foundation mm -hmm. of, uh, of Jesus Christ if it wants to have ultimate truth. And, and here down towards the end, talking about what philosophy can't do, it can't answer the ultimate questions of life and, and again here we go with Paul and the gospel again mm -hmm. you know in verses 11 through 14 and we'll just start with 13 for our time's sake today and you who dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh God made uh, made you alive together with him having forgiven all of your trespasses canceling the record of debt that stood against you uh, with its legal demands this he set aside nailing it to the cross right he just keeps coming back to that and well he should and well we should uh, and again, what is central to the gospel? Jesus Christ is. Yeah. So I, I think a question even go groups can find themselves probably wrestling with this is where do we, what philosophies in our culture today or do we see mixing in and, and, yeah. and contending with the centrality of Christ or, or even tending with a clear you know, ways that God has called us to walk and live out our faith? Where are maybe some examples of those philosophies today that in their mix – and we may not even see it. Or maybe you've seen them sneaking into the church or we believe something without realizing that's not a, a, a silly example. Mm -hmm. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a silly one. I've used it in the past, but it's, it's not in scripture. I, like, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Yeah, hands, yeah like you know. those are ideas that are rooted in. We in, serve a God of order, so if you're not a type A personality, you got a problem. That kind I haven't of thing. heard that. I mean, you haven't heard that one. That's because uh, <laughs> you're type A. Huh? Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but haven't you heard that people say that? We, we I, I, yes, it's interesting how we take a phrase that got of order and put it into whatever we find is right. the best word right. in our lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just what are what are some of those? Maybe they're secular, maybe they're religious, but they're, mm -hmm. where they've snuck into the church, and these are the philosophies that um, mix or even um, pollute the purity of the faith that that because they seem plausible. And we mix them with our faith. So don't deny them, but mix yeah. them. Yeah. Mm. Trying to think of how to answer that without opening a huge can of worms. I don't do it. You know, <laughs> no. you know, you know like uh, I was trying to open up a huge can. Of worms. <laughs> oh, only because David likes we'll fishing. And and I can see yeah. well, okay, so it so all right, so philosophy, right? Love of wisdom, right? Okay, mm -hmm. Love of knowledge. Good. And in the immediate context in which it was talking about here, so we would separate philosophy into normally some type of humanism uh, understanding because that's how we define mm -hmm. philosophy today or how we think about philosophy today. How our philosophy then, while it would include that, it would also include how do you think about God or the divine. So it would not, like when we think of philosophy, generally we're not necessarily thinking about um, the ability to answer ultimate questions. We're thinking about, you know, other things. But um, in this context, they would include the divine in, mm -hmm. in, in those thoughts. But um, 
So with me, I, I mentioned that paper I wrote years ago uh, about the fact that Adam and Eve had to be literal yeah. uh, for Paul's um, salvation doctrine to, to work according to what he's written. Um, so again, there's that love of wisdom, that there's that love of thought to where it can work that if you said that Adam and Eve did not exist literally, um, then that could be a place where because listen, I'm not talking about origins in the sense of how old the earth is or, or, or all yeah, of that, yeah. mm-hmm. but I'm talking about s- specifically in regard to Adam and Eve, in my opinion, they have to be literal yeah. uh, people. There are those out there who've taken a love of learning or taken from other fields mm-hmm. that it's not observable science. You can't go back there and, and see it. It is a, in that sense, a philosophy mm-hmm. of understanding, uh, of, of taking human tradition or understandings of certain theories that started back with Timothy mm-hmm. Hutton and, and others. Mm-hmm. Um, and said, okay, Adam and Eve can't be real or can't be literal, um, and so it must be something else, right? So that's one example of how a love of wisdom, human tradition has compiled over time to say Adam and Eve can't be real, which would go contra to what I would believe is a biblical distinction um, necessary for Pauline theology. So I would say that's one place where you see in the church now to where the um, early chapters of uh, Genesis are completely mythological, and, yeah, and just instructive. Yeah. And so I could see that a place that I think without opening too broad of a can of worms, we could say that a love of learning, human tradition, philosophy has impacted theology to negate our understandings of Genesis without, without getting too far down into creationism arguments, but at least saying within the context of Adam and Eve, that philosophy has impacted us uh, in a negative way. So now you've got people thinking, I can barely figure out what I'm going to make for dinner. And now there's all these philosophies that I'm supposed to be thinking about besides spending time Mm -hmm. in God's word. And it can feel overwhelmed. I mean, does that make like people Mm -hmm. could be burdened? And again, I don't I don't think I'm simple minded, but I just love the first sentence for I want you to know how greatly I am struggling for, for you, for those in Laodicea. I'm assuming his struggling is he's praying for them. And so we know we've seen in Christ, we've seen Jesus, we've seen in him. I was the nerd and went through and counted and saw like 16 or 18 times as I was doing it. But as opposed to panicking, thinking, oh my gosh, now I need to understand who is this Hutton dude. You know, I mean, because a lot of people Mm -hmm. aren't even going to know that name. I fall back on, I study, I sit under great teachings and... David, <laughs> David. <laughs> both yeah. of you, all of you, um, oh, sorry. Th- that we, <laughs> there hey, you thanks, go, man. good I job guys, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go, <laughs> but we pray, I mean, you know, like as, as yeah. these things are being bombarded and we ask the spirit to help us understand, because there's so much out there, and you're right, this is our Colossae, this is our Athens, I just have to Wikipedia anything, and I have a new, a new philosophy, yeah. a new God to sit underneath. If you give me one book, just give me the Bible. Mm-hmm. Right, um, we have our lives to learn and mm-hmm. to grow. Um, start there, focus there. That uh, you know, if you were asking me advice or wisdom, I would say mm-hmm. um, to the person sitting in the pew, starting in with your Bible, mm-hmm. starting in with Jesus. All these other things will come in time. You know, don't but don't shield yourself away from everything. That's a good but at challenge. the same time, start start with this. And when in doubt, go to your Bible. Right. When in doubt, go to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think that would be the advice that I give. Don't freak out if you don't have all the answers. You know, um, I, I don't have all the answers. Mm-hmm. I, I've probably forgotten most of what I've learned and I have to go review it. Right. It's just um, if you start in, in your, your, your focus and your center is in Jesus Christ, you're going to be OK. Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, along with that is not having all the answers, but awareness. Mm-hmm. Just there's there's a there's a healthy place even that this message brings about which is oh, the awareness that there's things that are going to sound like Jesus they're going to sound like the bible uh, and so when you are hearing new things mm-hmm. you don't have to go out and reach out with the research of all the new things are but when they come across your path mm-hmm. say i need to be aware that there's plausible arguments that might be mm-hmm. sound like Jesus so i'm going to double check this I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to God's Word if I only have one book or ask someone who I know might be more attuned to some of those things. But I'm going to not just assume because it sounds like Jesus, it is Jesus. Not just assume because it sounds plausible mm-hmm. that it is. So just the awareness that that's 
attention. Mm -hmm. So when it comes across your path, you know how to act on it. Well, well, Tammy burned me just today. We were in the lobby talking about different <laughs> things, and she goes, "Well, maybe you should research that." You know, because oh. I was talking about something I didn't know, and she said, "Well, maybe you should research that, I'm right?" So, teasing, so God. it's a good, it's a good, it's a good word. That's why you came in my office crying. <laughs> yes, yeah. sucking my thumb, holding my ears. So I can, oh. I, I can see that. I'm visualizing. No, and I, I love this, and I have so much fun. Even when you bring up a new name, it's like I'm Wikipediaing and I'm studying, but I'm just thinking. Sometimes it feels heavy, and I'm sure we have brothers and sisters sitting out there that it's like, oh man, I'm trying to figure out this Jesus thing, and now there's other philosophies I'm supposed to know about so that I can stand against them. So I mean, wasn't it Smith Wigglesworth who wouldn't allow any newspapers in his house or other books? He just read the Bible. Oh, I don't know. Is it Could Wigglesworth? Be. I think it was a, mm -hmm. was a real name. It was somebody, but he's from London. Okay. Okay. I'm sure I can go to Athens and find you out. Can right? find <laughs> you can find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to start calling my computer Athens. That's, I know. That's <laughs> good. Wow. That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's got to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks for joining us, and we will see you guys Sunday. Have a great